Hello and welcome to this session on planning for environmental sanitation and fecal sludge management. My name is Christoph Lüthi. I work with Eavac Sundek, the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology, with the Department of Sundek, the Department of Sanitation, Water and Solid Waste for Development. If you want to learn a bit more what we do, take a look at this website, www.sundek.ch. In this course, we're going to be focusing mainly on these two urban contexts, the peri-urban interface on the continuum between rural and urban areas, and secondly, the informal settlements, also called slums in colloquial language, and taking a closer look at how to integrate and how to plan for these two contexts. These two areas that I've mentioned are experiencing rapid urbanization, and in migration from rural areas. They are characterized by poor service provision and also rapidly shifting environments and dysfunctional informal service provision. It is therefore no wonder that these urban areas show a poor improvement in achieving the MDGs in the last 15 years. These two numbers here improved access to sanitation in urban sub-Saharan Africa in 1990, 39%, to the, year from, uh, the figure from this year, 2015, 40%, shows that we've only made progress by 1% in sanitation in urban areas. And of course, the reason for that are the complexities in dealing with service provision for these notoriously difficult and complex areas. One of the reasons for the complexity is the diversity of needs and priorities of the actors involved. And urban sanitation is transaction intensive, which means there's a number of different actors, stakeholders involved, which need to be on board for proper planning of services for the urban population. The authorities, the municipal authorities, national authorities, religious leaders, utilities, the police for enforcement purposes, but also the central service providers, the public, private, manual, informal, formal um, service providers that provide some of the services around fecal sludge management. The tenants and landlords who actually pay for these services, for the emptying of their septic tanks or latrines. The different donors, NGOs, actors who finance some of these schemes and projects, and last but not least, the end users, the farmers, the fuel consumers, the breeders who could use some of the um, outputs and nutrients coming out of proper end uses. On this slide, we see what an ideal fecal sludge management governance could look like. At the center, the municipality or the local authority, ideally a elected body that takes the decisions on behalf of its constituency. And on the bottom, the three main actors involved in service delivery, the community-based organizations, the NGOs, also called .org, the utility in charge of treatment mostly, sometimes collection, .gov, and lastly, the private entrepreneurs who also play an important role in providing affordable services for the poor. But how do we actually plan for these complex contexts? I'd like to introduce you to two recent innovations in integrated sanitation planning. First one is Sanitation 21, recently published by IWA, EAVAG, and GIZ. And it provides a citywide planning approach to environmental sanitation services and fecal sludge management. It takes an incremental approach. That means it goes for a step-by-step -step rather than a big bang, one size fits all approach. It's a sound approach, but unfortunately has never been implemented on the ground, because of also because it's a very new document. The second approach is the CLUES approach, which stands for Community-Led Urban Environmental Sanitation Planning. This was produced by EAVAG and UN Habitat, and published in 2011. It provides a bottom-up, people-centered approach to better em environmental services and is also incremental in nature, which means it allows for realistic and affordable solutions for neighborhoods 
in cities. Clues has been piloted in a number of countries and we look back at a number of successful approaches and piloting in Sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. I'm going to now run you through some of the details of both approaches. The Sanitation 21 approach is a citywide approach, like I've said, and it starts out with defining the institutional framework for service delivery, identifying the main stakeholders, assessing the priorities of these stakeholders, and trying to define a collective vision and priorities for improved sanitation in the city. Importantly, in step one, you establish a city sanitation task force and agree upon the planning process itself. In step two, we look at the existing context and provide baseline information by reviewing existing information. We also assess the capacity of existing systems and identify areas of high risk. Lastly, we try to identify constraints to service provision. In step three, we start looking at strategies for improved sanitation systems in, at citywide level. Important here is the adoption of an incremental approach towards service delivery, uh, comparing decentralized versus centralized systems, considering a range of different technology choices, and planning for end use, disposal, or reuse, if practical. Important is also to look at the cost implications to stay as realistic as possible. In step four, we're formulating appropriate management arrangements, considering financial and cost recovery mechanisms, and considering alternative management arrangements. And lastly, in step five, preparing for implementation, this is where we actually define the city sanitation action plan we define short, medium, and long-term priorities for implementation. Moving from citywide to neighborhood scale, I mentioned CLUES was especially adapted to neighborhood planning processes, and CLUES follows pretty much the same steps and sequences as in Sanitation 21. In this case, we start with process ignition, so creating demand at the neighborhood level, followed by a launch of the planning process, this is usually done in a collective workshop at neighborhood level. Follow up by a detailed assessment, creating the baseline of information and reporting on the current situation in the neighborhood. In step four, it's about prioritization of needs. What does the community actually perceive as their biggest problem? And then validating these needs and problems. In step five, we're identifying different service options. Um, also looking at what kind of technology and systems are feasible for the given context and, and neighborhood, and looking at the different costing options of these different service options. Step six, development of an action plan. This is where uh, external experts, local experts come in and actually help out in devising an action plan that is costed, timed, and ideally implementable step by step. And lastly, step seven, implementation of the action plan. This is where we go for an incremental implementation of the action plan outlined in CLUES. We also have three cross-cutting cross tasks, exposure and communication, where the community and other stakeholders are exposed to other pilot projects or facilities that has, have been built nearby. Training and capacity development, so building up and developing skills at local level, at city level, but also at neighborhood level. And lastly, the monitoring and evaluation of the entire planning process and, of course, then of the implementation once you start implementing. In a nutshell, that is what the two planning frameworks are about. And both of these planning frameworks, of course, also are very applicable to fecal sludge management schemes. This slide depicts the sanitation chain from user interface on the left here to the end user, in this case industry, throughout the entire sanitation chain. We have the household, toilet, the emptying, the transport, the treatment, 
and finally end use application with the different stakeholders involved across the sanitation chain. The households who usually pay an emptying fee to the private enterprise that comes and picks up and empties the pit latrines or septic tanks. The private enterprise that pays is a discharge fee to the public utility that treats the raw sludge. And finally, the end use, in this case industry, for example, cement industry, paying a purchase price for the treated and hygienized dried sludge. So the take home message from this session would be to plan for integrated approach to fecal sludge management across the entire sanitation chain. Not only single parts or single technology solutions, but to actually go for appropriate and realistic planning frameworks that allow for sustainable and fundable implementable solutions for complex urban areas. Thanks for joining us in this session. If you need more information, take a look at the following links that we provide for you.